Tuesdays, uh, or what we will from now on be referring to as Triple T. So I thank you for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy this. Uh, today on Triple T, we're going to be talking about something with a Scottish flair to it, so I thought I'd take a minute or two just to talk about Scotland. You know, when you think of Scotland, you, you think of the obvious things. You think of kilts and bagpipes and Scotch whiskey, and, you know, Scotland certainly has all of those things. I was fortunate enough to, uh, to visit Scotland several years ago. Uh, I was there for about a week for a scientific conference. Uh, I spent some time in Glasgow. Um, Glasgow's a wonderful big city. I mean, it's got its good and its bad, like any big city. It reminded me quite a bit of Philadelphia, actually. But this, the conference was actually in a town called Creef, which I believe was sort of the northern coastal, sort of north northish coastal area. Absolutely beautiful area. Uh, Creef was actually a um, a hotel that was built for people to go and, and take water treatments and mineral springs sort of things. Uh, but the surrounding area is just these beautiful rolling hills, pastures, sheep, locks that would go on for forever. So much natural beauty, you, you just, I, I couldn't believe it. You know, it just took my breath away everywhere that I went. Um, and the people were just wonderful, warm, welcoming. Uh, you know, the, you, you get an image of the angry Scotsman and you think that's what everybody's going to be like, but of course they're, they're not at all like that. Uh, quite, quite a wonderful place to, to be. Uh, and I hope that any of you folks that are in the UK or in particular in Scotland are not too offended by my little capsulization of your your world uh, but because of the things that require me to refer to this video as triple T uh, I need to have some sort of a preamble uh, that takes up the first minute or two and uh, I've now done that so today what I wanted to talk about and the reason why we started with Scotland is I want to talk about Rattray's Old Gallery now this is a recent tin that I purchased, ooh, I don't know, probably four or five months ago. Um, but that's what we're going to be talking about. So let's begin with some sort of historical background. So Rattray is named for Charles Rattray. Charles Rattray was born in 1880 in Scotland, and he learned the tobacco trade in Dundee, in Scotland. In 1903, he opened up his own shop, which was called the House of Rattray. And this was in Perth, which ultimately became one of the largest tobacco companies in the British Isles. Rattray died in 1964, and his son Charles Jr. took over. But the company began to decline at that point, and the rights to some or all of its blends <clears throat> were transferred to Robert McConnell Tobaccos of London. Rattray continued on until 1980s, and, and was ultimately bought out by the former Kohlhaas Kopp and Company of Germany. Old Gallery is one of Charles Rattray's original blends, which he writes about on his booklet in his booklet on tobacco blending. A disc, the name of the book is great. It's a disquisition for the connoisseur, and that was the name of, of Charles Rattray's book on tobacco blending. Gallery, by the way, was an ancient Scottish province that included Perth, so the House of Rattray was actually in Gallery, although it was no longer called Gallery. So let's take a look at the tobacco. According to Rattray's book, uh, Old Gallery was one of his all Virginia blends, so 100% Virginia. And it was manufactured from pure Virginia leaf without any artificial flavorings. He wrote um, in, in his colorful way that Old Gallery is found all over the world wherever Englishmen go. It is their vade mecum, which is Latin for go with me, and is meant to refer to a handbook or guide for when you're traveling. Now the modern incarnation of Old Gallery is a broken flake, as you can see here, and it appears to be mostly red and bright Virginias, but there is also a, um, a bit of both Perique and uh, Kentucky, uh, which, which really adds to the flavor profile. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have this in this uh, I believe it's a Big Ben Church Warden. Yep, Big Ben Church Warden. And I'm going to use my normal just sort of twist a little bit as I'm packing it in there method. Which tends to work well for these broken flakes. So on the packing and lighting, uh, it is a broken flake and it arrives a bit moist, but it's not too wet to smoke. Um, 
you might benefit from a five to ten minute drying time. I've not found it to be necessary, but you know, everybody's different. It packs quite easily. Uh, just a slight twist as you're putting it in to sort of break up that, that loose broken flake. Lighting has not been an issue, but I do recommend that sort of twisting tamp before the second light that spreads out the charred ash. So let's go ahead and light her up. And as we're lighting, let's move on and talk about the smell and the taste. All right, first on the, the tin note. The tin note is what you would expect from a pure Virginia. It's got grassy sweetness, a bit of figginess from the perique. It's a subdued uh, but very pleasant uh, sort of pastoral barnyard kind of kind of smell. The taste uh, on the initial light, you just get pure Virginia goodness. It's grassy and it's got this nice sort of ready oaty flavor. It's somewhat mild in flavor, and the Perique and the Kentucky are really hard to detect unless you vertreo. And I gotta say, this is a blend that really shines when you retrohale. Um, I get this sort of woody antique flavor. Um, it's hard to describe, but it's very nice. And it has a, a bit of a kick of spice from the Perique. Now this is a blend that does have complexity and it does evolve as the as the bowl goes on. But that evolution seems to be more from the melding of the taste than from the than any new taste profiles uh, you know, arising or from any increasing or decreasing of the individual components. There certainly is none of that tangy vinegary stuff that you get from uh, the lower quality uh, Virginia blends that are out there. Oh, it's really, really wonderful stuff. So let's wrap this up with some final thoughts. So final thoughts on Old Gallery. Folks, as I've said many times, I'm not a Virginia smoker. There are a few straight Virginia or nearly straight Virginia blends that I keep on hand um, to enjoy as an occasional treat. And to be honest, there's only about three or four blends on that list, and Old Gallery is probably number two. It's, in my opinion, a blend of, of pure simplicity that allows the tobacco to shine. And it appears to be a faithful, if not accurate, depiction of what historically Old Gallery was meant to be. Unfortunately, over the past year or so, Rattray's blends have become scarce in the U.S. And this has become a blend that is hard to find. It's worth keeping an eye out for it. Now, you know I'm not a fan of chasing unicorn blends, but this really is a blend that I would recommend everyone try at least once, certainly if you've got any place in your heart for Virginia's. But having said that, I do believe that there are readily available Virginia blends uh, of similar quality that you should try as well. And I'll try to talk about one or two of those in a, in a coming video. So I hope that you've enjoyed hearing about my impressions of the blend, and I hope that if you try Old Gallery, or if you have tried Old Gallery, you'll share your impressions in the comments below. If you like these videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you can keep up with future triple T's. And be sure to like and share this video on your favorite social media platforms. And as always, thank you for watching, and remember, the only rule in pipe smoking is that you smoke what you like, and you like what you smoke. Take care.